Hello and welcome to the NBA2 Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Fenzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Welcome to Slogfest 2020, which ironically describes 2020. <laughs> I got no idea how to say or how to describe this episode. This episode is all about the worst, and this year is the worst. But this year? Well, the start of this year, till now, I guess. I mean, this year has been the worst. <laughs> And also joining us today is Tatera. Uh, I don't have an intro for the, this episode. Oh man, I am so good at being bad. <laughs> oh man, no, no, no. You're, you're Tatera, so you're good. We need trash. What's that trash Pokemon? <laughs> hey, but I'm also red and black, so it means I'm edgy. <laughs> you're edgy, but you're not trash. <laughs> and you're not a man type. <laughs> but he's oh, so cute. cute. As they jump up into, from the water and swallow your soul. <laughs> Oh boy, so anyway, talking about Swallowing Souls, in this episode, we are going to review Season 1, Episode 2 the of Pony Life, uh, The Best of the Worst. So, in this episode, Rainbow Dash's competitive spirit is put to the test when a new pony challenged her to a contest unlike any other, uh, culminating in a loser take all race to prove which pony is truly the worst. So anyway, uh, before we jump into it, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, I I said, talking about the first couple episodes of Pony Life, that as long as they don't make the characters jerks, I can enjoy it. Well, they it turns out they're making all the new characters jerks, at least for a time. Uh, as we get some pretty... In t- a pretty intensively negative antagonist this time around. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think Maddie, uh, last recording, uh, mentioned something about that, like um, all of the new characters that appeared in Pony Life seems to be jerks. And yeah, starting with this one, we, we can see that. Though in truth, we haven't gotten that many new characters. It's been a pretty limited set. For now, for now. But Dishwasher Slog is a character who, I very rarely say this in My Little Pony, I'd be okay if I didn't see him again. And also I will talk about the insane terror that is the Colt in this episode. <laughs> I think it's an upgrade from the pa- twins, the, the cake twins. The cake twins were adorable. Norman, what what do you speak? Oh, what, what are you saying, Norman? I'm I, just, think, I think you're talking the crazy talk. I'm just saying what we said before. Oh, it's that flurry heart. I forgot. Well, there's a debate about which is cuter, <laughs> I suppose. But I will say that there is one positive message I took from this episode, but I will save that to where we get to the end. So All stay right, tuned. Then. All righty then. Anyway, uh, Tara, what about you? I mean, for me, this was decent. I actually enjoyed a couple bits of it, surprisingly. And pretty much what Silver said about the new character being a jerk and another character being the stuff of nightmares that will probably make someone not be able to sleep tonight. (laughs) But I, I enjoyed it, first impressions. And just looking back at it, well, we'll see. All right. And as for me, this episode was an interesting one. We get a cult, or a stallion in this case. Well, cult and stallion, that's true. And they're mm, not memorable, to say the least. And the episode itself is interesting, let's just say that. So anywho, before we jump into it, if you guys have not watched the episode yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So anyway, we start off the episode with Rainbow Dash coming home from an event where she won goal, like always. And while going home, she comes across a fan, a cult, who is, well, just uh, adorable, I guess. I, I, I guess. He is staring into my soul. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, he's fawning over Rainbow Dash, saying she's the best and whatnot. And Rainbow Dash says, uh, kid, I, I do it for the fans, you know, like, um, this wins and whatnot. It's not all about the trophy. 
but <laughs> it's all about defense and probably give the fan the trophy which squash the little guy okay he's dead uh-huh, yeah so anyway while that's happening we see rainbow dash head to sugar cube corner to hang with her friends and she notices that Pinkie Pie is hanging up a photo of employee of the month and somehow Rainbow Dash is the employee of the month even though she didn't work there like what? She's just that good so Pinkie wanting to celebrate Rainbow Dash's awesomeness made her a pie a pie we've crossed the event horizon I'm just saying yeah a pie (laughs) continuity? probably not but anywho, Rainbow Dash doesn't freak out about the pie, and she's happy that everybody is, um, well, celebrating her awesomeness. So yay, that's cool. And Pinky goes back to the counter and, well, wants to serve drinks for everyone. But we see here there's there a stallion who's asking for a drink, and like Tapper, Pinky Pie swings the drink to the stallion and the stallion didn't catch it or at least he has lag and well <laughs> the drink smashes to the wall and spills on the floor and I'm gonna pause here so anyway uh, Silver what do you think? That Colt why is he so frightening? You notice that he never actually looks at Rainbow Dash his face is always turned towards the audience <laughs> He is peering into the fourth wall and finding nah. us so very fascinating. Nah, nah, Silver. It's one of those things where child actors don't really know how to react and they just stare at the camera because, well, that's what they think they should do. Which would actually be very clever if I thought that was intentional, but I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's giving them too much credit if it's true. <laughs> Wouldn't it be not giving them enough credit if it was true? I mean, if it's true, that's awesome on them, but I don't know, man. Like, that's... uh, I don't know. I don't know what you're saying, anyway. But uh, the freakiest part is when the kid blinks. (laughs) See, he's got these darker patches around his eyes that I thought were meant to represent his his eyes overall. But when he blinks, his corneas basically blink, uh, blink out. So, like, oh, those are, that just looks like he's blinking wrong. He's blinking unnaturally. Would you say that's animation error? No, I I think that they were just trying for a different uh, pony style design. But it just looked, wait, when I first saw it, I was like, ah, what? 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 (laughs) Silver, silver, this is not Ladybug. I can be freaked out by more than one cartoon. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, yes, I was like, okay, Rainbow, move away from the small child. D- d- don't murder the small child. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> okay, yes, I don't know. Like, child murder, uh, that's not good. And then the hugs they give in this show. When Rainbow says that being uh, your best friend is, is the best thing of all. Or something to that effect and everyone gathers together for this ah hug it looks more like they're trying to buttress her <laughs> uh, yeah. mm. their hugs are very odd yeah it's one of those cases where I see what they're going for it works but don't pause the frame because questions are there to be asked <laughs> but I think the thing that doesn't really work is because the person hugging them all is Rainbow Dash. Or the hug pile is just Rainbow Dash. Because if it's Pinkie Pie, you don't really question it. <laughs> well, either way, I, I feel like their support is being quite quite architectural. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about the new guy? Well, so far all we see is that he has bad, bad hand-eye coordination. But, mm. as we'll quickly learn, this is not... Well, this is not actually the case. But I'll I'll save that for when he's a bit more developed. Hmm. All right, all right. Anyway, uh, Tara, what about you? I mean, not much to say here, but I agree too with the Colts, or I guess say the Philly. 
being the stuff of nightmares, but at least Rainbow Dash put it out of its misery. <laughs> Not yet really, but carry on. And then I guess I could say for Dishwater Slog, I mean, when I first saw, because uh, I don't remember when I first saw the episode, but th- this was actually the first episode where I saw Pony Life, and I first saw Dishwater Slog, and I'm like, what, is this guy a hobo? <laughs> Probably. That's that's all I got to say for now. Alrighty then. Anyway, uh, carrying on. So, Dishwasher Slog here challenged Rainbow Dash to a worse off. And that is when a... Hmm, I'm trying to find the right words here because it's a competition between two ponies trying to be losers. Rainbow Dash doesn't seem to understand the concept because she's a winner. And Pinkie Pie just says, like, this competition's dumb. You should probably not participate in said competition. And Dishwasher Slock here just says, What are you, afraid of a little friendly competition? And that triggers Rainbow Dash, and Rainbow Dash accepts the stupid challenge. And, yeah, this is just silly and dumb. Oh, God, yeah. So, anywho, uh, the start of the challenge, like, what was it again? Uh, the, the challenge category is athleticism, uh, emotions, and also artistic merits, something like that. So, peop- the, the pony is just asked Rainbow, like, why did you accept? And her explanation is, is just for a friendly competition. I can never turn it down. And yeah, uh, the, the ponies just don't really get why Rainbow Dash accept. So anywho, uh, the first contest is a test of strength. Somehow Rainbow Dash is able to lift a building. What? I'm uh, Still, what? <laughs> Let's just hope there's no one in said building. It's oh my god! This is the rainbow party's back. She'll kill us all. <laughs> ah! Yeah, and dishwashers here can't even lift an empty can of tomato. So yeah, dishwasher slog here wins the worst off. Then there's cake decorating artistic merits here. Um, Pinky says, oh, uh, this is a failed cake I made, so why don't you guys try and decorate it uh, worse as possible. And Rainbow here decorates it pretty bad, but somehow Twilight just loves it because it's... What was the word, Silver? Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, Norm? Um, Twilight, she just mentioned something like random, random perfection, something like that? Honestly, I uh, no, I don't. I don't remember what Twilight said. Yeah, but it's to the like what she just mentioned is like, oh, this looks awesome because it's random, but yet somehow looks good and stuff. Or or basically, her the new version of organized chaos. Ah, yes. And, and somewhere out there, Discord is is having a, a pang of of rage. <laughs> yeah. And, well, Dishwasher here has this, like, he drew over one of the best employee pictures of the month, and Pinky is shocked that that happened, and Rarity comes in, looks at the art, and faints. That's her gimmick, comes in and faints. Dishwasher here says, oh, I win because of the terrible art, and I'm going to pause here because that's the end of episode one. So, Tara, what do you think? Well, this whole thing with the worst or the fail-off, as you call it, is confusing. Because it's like, how could you be good at being the worst? I mean, that like I don't get it. But another thing that confuses me is that the word friendly competition is what triggers her. And you think that the word loser would make her feel triggered. And it's like, nope, just friendly competition. It's like, what? I mean, you you like competitions, but that triggers you and not the word loser? I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I remember 
hearing what that the UK doesn't like the word loser or something like that because it was censored or banned. I remember that. Here, I remember mm. hearing that, like they have to censor the word in the UK. Or is that Australia? I don't remember. I'm not aware of anyone having that much sensitivity to being called a loser. No, uh, it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. I think I reported way back when in the news, way back when. But the word loser doesn't really affect Rainbow Dash at all because it's like there's winners and losers, so you have to take your lumps. But friendly competition, oh, that that triggers her. Oh, God, oh, rage. But another thing, too, that I kind of don't understand, I guess Applejack is now the new one that breaks the fourth wall because when she mentioned about Dame, uh, Rainbow Dash accepting the competition, and she's like, why are you going to be worse than you are? And then she looks at the camera like, or the audience being like, the only time she's done something like this is not returning my book. It's like, okay, so I guess <laughs> Applejack's now the one that breaks the fourth wall. Yeah, because Pinkie Pie is busy buying potions and stuff. She's not making them, that's for sure. That's true. <laughs> And then the one thing I will get nitpicky about, I mean, I still like the how Rainbow Dash is trying to be the worst because she's always been the best. The one thing I am going to be nitpicky about, though, when uh, Dishwasher Slog's like, oh, the worst customer, customer ever is me. And then he shows a picture. It's like, uh, it's a pony with a horn. But like, you're not a unicorn, though. You don't have a horn. So why are you saying that's you? <laughs> so he draws bad. See, it, it kind of works in the logic there because he couldn't really draw a self-portrait of himself. Oh, that's true. See, that's why it's so confusing. <laughs> that or there's a horn buried under all that. Yeah, I mean, he's really inadequate here because, like, he could be compensating for something. Oh, I think you're compensating. What's he <laughs> compensating for? I don't know. Uh, but anywho, is that all, Sarah? Yep, that's all. All right. Silver, what were you, man? Well, okay. I agree that the that this whole... Be, uh, best at being the worst is just a paradox because if you lose to the person who is the best of the worst that means you're an even bigger loser than that loser and so that mm-hmm. makes you a double loser which makes you a worse loser than the loser but then the loser has lost so that makes him an even loser of the losers huh? I, I I think what you're looking for Silver is oxymoron who are you calling an oxymoron? <laughs> nah man an oxymoron I, I learned that from uh, the living tombstone but either way, this competition just seems patently absurd, and you could actually have a lot of fun with it. But here's the thing. When Dishwasher was first introduced and he, he misses the glass, you think, oh, it's meant to show that he's just not good at stuff. But it's very clear by the time he's drawing on Pinky's portrait that he's doing all this intentionally, and that actually takes some of the fun out of it. I mean, remember Troubleshoes. He was kind of funny because he had this indignity about all that was happening to him. True, and at least it shows that he's uncoordinated. And, well, one of the few reasons we can attain from those is that uh, he's, what, big, he's bulky, and that's what makes him clumsy. But Dishwasher is intentionally trying to be bad. And that takes a lot of the fun out of it. True, true. I mean, Dishwasher here... At <laughs> at first we see him, he's kind of a klutz. At least that's how I view it. I mean, he's a klutz. He doesn't really uh, dress well. I mean, he's kind of a nit. Not in education or in training. But the thing is, he's doing it all on purpose. And it shows that he's just a... What's the word I'm looking for? Bum. Yes. Basically, this competition just feels like it could be fun and silly, except that Dishwasher is trying to be as negative as possible. And that's why when he tries to lift a can, you get the sense that he's more just making a show. He's not literally that weak. But we haven't reached the the point of no return for him just yet. Though, I do find it funny when Pinky is upset that one of her portraits got painted on. 
Well, let's be fair here. You have at least 20 of the identical ones. You're the only employee. And you're still not as popular as Fluttershy at the School of Friendship. True that. Uh, so, that's all I got. Yeah, I, I think I have something to say when we reach near the end about the competition and the participant itself. But anyhow, I'm going to carry on. Uh, so, uh, the next challenge is about emotions and how to control them and whatnot. So, uh, Rarity is trying to coach Rainbow Dash and uh, she got her game face on. Somehow, Fluttershy here has the power to shrink and be really cute. And Rainbow Dash doesn't want to give cute little Fluttershy a hug. And yay, somehow she won the first round. And Applejack comes in, scolding Rainbow Dash about not returning her book, and that got a bit personal. I, Rain, sorry, Applejack here seems to be the new hotness. Like, she's... She, she's carrying the torch of likable characters. You agree, Silver? Well, she's certainly breaking the fourth wall a great deal more. But in later episodes, I'll be just like, why Why are you doing this? Fourth wall is sort of when you take people off guard. Right now, Applejack's just often is just stating the obvious to the audience. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, I haven't seen all of it, but the part about the book, like, Ah man, I don't really think that's breaking the fourth wall, but she's just um highlighting something she mentioned before, and that was kind of nice, like um something that don't doesn't really need to be highlighted, but she did. It was cool. But anywho, I'm gonna carry on. So um, it seems that Rainbow Dash is kind of leading with her stone face and whatnot, and a cult the 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 cult survived somehow. And yeah, he's running to Rainbow Dash trying to say how awesome she is. And Dishwasher here trips the little guy. And Rainbow Dash couldn't really, call this, uh, stand for it and ask the little guy if he's okay or not. And Rainbow Dash just goes to Dish and says, why the hell did you do that? Like, what's wrong with you? And Dishwasher says, oh, um, I win because I show emotion. And Rainbow Dash, sorry, no, Fluttershy just grew big and scolds the little guy, or scolds Dish. And Dish doesn't really care or whatnot. And you notice Dishwasher here is licking his front hoof like a cat. So that's something interesting. Hmm. So yeah, after being schooled by Rainbow Dash, he doesn't really care. And Rainbow Dash decides that hey okay um I have something to say oh uh, with you being a jerk and a meanie uh, you are great at doing that so you win that means you lose stuff I guess and dishwasher accepts the L and says that okay next challenge is a race the loser... Oh, man. Whatever it is. I, I, I don't know. Loser takes all? I guess. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Like, oh, God. Anyway. uh, Back in Sugar Cube Corner, Rainbow Dash asks for a potion. Maybe drinking a potion can make me worse. And somehow, uh, one of the potions gave her um concussion laser beam eyes. And somehow... Blasting a laser to a cake somehow made it good. Nope, she's still awesome. So they race at night and somehow they try to be bad. And nah, man, this is just dumb. Real dumb. So I'm just going to kind of wrap it up ASAP here. So one of Rainbow Dash's fan, the Colt, uh, cheers for her and that makes Rainbow Dash think, you know what, now this is just dumb, I'm gonna win I'm gonna win for the kid so she speeds through crossing the fishing line first and won and Dishwasher here says, oh you won, that means you lose, that means I win, yay and Rainbow Dash says, GG, good game this confused Dish because, wait what was this, I, I do not understand and Rainbow Dash says, yeah, I mean, uh, that's what good winners do, good sports. Like, we congratulate each other for the game. And, yeah. 
I won, you lose, no hard feelings. And let's try better next time. And this confused dish and let's just say episode ends. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Anywho, yeah. So final thoughts and what do you think, Silver? Well, okay. The first off this episode helps establish some of the rules. So the last time we talked about Pony Life, I uh I was like when Pinky exploded, I was like, Ah they killed Pinky <laughs> And then twice Twilight shattered, and that seemed a bit more acceptable somehow. And now we've got Fluttershy grows and shrinks, depending on her mood. And Rarity faints and summons couches. Applejack talks to the audience. Rainbow, I guess, there's the question of what's her shtick? I mean, is she going to have that rainbow drop of inner inner clarity every time she has a competition? I do not know. Gundam Seed. <laughs> oh, she's entered Seed mode or Super Saiyan. <laughs> Super Saiyan Seed mode. But also with Dishwasher licking his hooves like a cat, that that along with Twilight freaking out and arcing her back like a cat uh, last time, I'm just like, okay, someone at the staff is clearly a cat fan. My little kitty, my little kitty. It all, honestly, I don't oh. mind, man. Like, uh, that's cute. I, I like it. It's a nice change. Actually, maybe we are back to Miraculous Ladybug. I'm an angry little kitty. Oh, my God. <laughs> God, no, no. That is so now, wrong. <laughs> what's the matter, Torterra? Don't you like the kitty? No, don't say it like that. <laughs> oh, God. It wasn't the Christmas special, by the way. That was the Christmas special. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> but, anywho, uh, when Dishwasher trips the colt, okay, he may be a terrifying little demon spawn, but no, you don't mess with a kid like that. And that's where it stopped being... That's where I realized, no, this is not... Uh, dishwasher is just naturally bad at things like... Or facing difficulty like troubleshoes. He's made this a choice. And he actually reminds me of... The people you see online who... Are demanding that you celebrate them... For how awful they are. I mean, look at me. Look at how I don't respect people. Look at how I don't care if I, if I hurt others. Somehow people think that that's worthy of praise or admiration or sets them apart. And you're just like, you're an idiot. So it seems very fitting then that Rainbow, instead of saying to like, oh, just ignore them, which requires an, uh, an effort of energy on your part, it's more that she finally re recommits to what she believes in, uh, in this case, winning. And the funny thing is, in any other setting, she'd sound terribly arrogant, saying, I'm a winner, and winners win. But in this case, it's more like she's focused again on what she's most passionate about, and there's just no room for dishwasher slog or anyone else after that. It's just her and going for the win. But through, but I guess I should say, without cheating, as that's also important. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Then at the end, it's not even dishwasher. Like, why aren't you playing by my rules? It's just like, yeah, she's. There's no room for him in her world now, where she's back to being her truer self. But it is disappointing that dishwasher gets the last word in this episode, as he attempts to spoil Twilight's uh, the book for Twilight and Applejack. So I kind of like to envision that as the iris uh, goes in on her goes in on him and uh that's the end of the episode you hear a magic sound and an explosion and he dead mm, yeah true <laughs> and that's why i need never worry about it again and anyway, anyway tara what about you oh i kind of iffy about this because like the whole failing at being the worst and it's like oh yeah i did this and it's like yeah i did this it was like how does that work it was just so confusing to me but i did say how I did get a good chuckle out of a few parts, like when Applejack was trying to get Rainbow Dash mad, and when she mentioned the book, she's like, oh, that got a bit too personal there. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple of good moments, and I d even though uh, I kind of agree with Silver how uh, Dishwasher gets the last word, I do kind of enjoy it, though, how uh, Twilight's like, oh, I haven't read that, and he's like, I'm going to spoil it, and it just cut to black. He's like, nope, you're not going to spoil it. Show's over. <laughs> but all in all, it's decent, I guess. I mean... 
not I've been saying I said that the last episode too, but that's what I could really say about these episodes lately because it's all over the place. Yeah, it, it's I'm starting to see that this this kind of show style and animation or usually just show style like it's not our cup of tea if you guys agree because the fast paced action the randomness like it feels like it's not aimed at us and when i mean us i mean uh mm, all the audiences like it feels like they're aiming for younger audience like kids who watch teen titans go and enjoy it unironically and I think I've seen some of Teen Titans go and there's some good merits in there but I don't know man like I don't know anyway Terry carry on the the thing I like though is the ending how because they do kind of I guess you could say they kind of keep the same way as Friendship is Magic with the lesson. It's like, yeah, even though a guy's trying to change you and, you know, you're trying to do that, be like, just just be who you are. Be, be yourself. I don't know if that's the exact lesson, but that's how I got where Rainbow Dash is trying to be something she's not good at. And that she's like, no, you know what? No, I am not going to give in to this. I'm not going to let this guy have his way. I'm going to do what I do best and just be who I am. Yeah, that's a good lesson to take out of it. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right. And as for me, this episode was, I don't know, guys. Like, it's entertaining, but I feel like the fast-paced action of the show, the randomness at points where it doesn't really make sense to be random, doesn't jive with me. And dishwasher here is, how do I put this? They try to make a character that's unlikable, like how Zephyr is. But with Zephyr, you kind of can tell that he's he's full of himself and doesn't realize that he's bad, or at least he's trying to act great but not. With this year, he it feels like he's just failing on purpose and it doesn't make sense for him to do that like who purposely fails at stuff like there's no good coming out of it unless i'm wrong but in all honesty the challenge to rainbow dash who can be the worst that's just silly and dumb i can just imagine the writers at the conference going what about we make rainbow dash the worst via a competition with a Colt who is terrible at doing stuff great idea write it down and try and make a script out of it and I don't know for me I I don't jive like it's not something I enjoy and you know honestly I, I think what could have done if this was in Friendship is Magic is that the Colt here is not great at doing stuff but he has the confidence and he believes that he's great, but in all honesty, he's terrible. And to prove his point, he challenges Rainbow Dash to a race in the... Um, what was the one way they race to Whitetail Woods, Silver? Oh, the uh, Running of the Leaves. Yeah. Like, he challenges Rainbow Dash to a Running of the Leaves just to prove a point that I am the greatest and fastest to his friends because well you got Rainbow Dash here who is obviously the fastest but that's in the air so now race race on land and see who's the fastest obviously he's going to lose but Rainbow Dash here doesn't want to make him look bad so she decides okay how do I make this stallion doesn't lose face but still win and give him an honest race I mean the dilemma is there and you could do so much with it but no, we got this instead. And this kind of episode doesn't really work in Friendship is Magic. Well, I think we should acknowledge that this is not Friendship is Magic. And, okay, this wasn't necessarily made for bronies. That's not a bad thing. That's your statement there. It's true, Silver. I accept it. And I, I don't know. I mean, we, we came... We got nine years of awesomeness and suddenly being 
push into this. It's one of those things where I find it hard not to compare. It's fine to compare just to say, okay, this is what I experienced. This is new. But this is sort of a sample. We'll undergo, I think, a much greater contrast with whatever G5 is. Oh, yeah. I mean, I hear G5 is going to be in 3D. So that's one thing to get used to. But I don't know. I mean, if G5 is okay, great, uh, or at least has a good storyline that doesn't really suck, that's awesome. But for now, we'll just have to wait and see. But still, Pony Life for now is one of those cases where if this was my first watch, I probably won't be a fan. I I hate to say it, but those are my feelings, man. Like, I... (laughs) uh, When we review this, we don't sugarcoat it and say stuff. Like, you guys know me for a while now, and I'm usually the positive one here. But in this scenario here, ah oh man, like, <laughs> I just can't. Oh, boys. But those are my thoughts, those are my thoughts. Um, In the end, entertaining. But let's see how episode 3 goes. Probably that will change my mind, right? Whew. May- maybe. Yeah. I'll have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah. Well, I-, I do want to catch up to the Discord part and the Spike part because I heard there's a lot of brouhaha going around with Spike and Discord is understandable because John Delancey is expensive. <laughs> so anyway, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode? Well, we shan't be talking about uh, John Delancey just yet for we shall be switching gears. It's time for an event that happens once in a blue moon as we go back to Little Witch Academia. Yay, awesomeness. Can't wait for that one. Like, oh man, watching the episode was really awesome, man. Like, mm. uh, but anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me lots of places. You can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. And if you do, and if you search for Silver Quill on Patreon or Ko-fi, you'll find pages where you can support my videos. And uh, let's see here. By the time people hear this podcast, My Little Pony versus the Trans, well, rather, meets the Transformers, Friendship in Disguise will have just started coming out here in the states. So keep an eye on Equestria Daily, where I post uh, comic reviews on Wednesdays. And on my YouTube channel, just do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill, and you shall find me. Awesome. And yeah, the new new comic is coming out. That's awesome because finally, because what? The comic was slated to come out on during May, was it? Yes, May, and it was going to be a four-week event. Yeah, and we got no idea how it's going to do go now. Is it going to be still four weeks? No, I think it's going to be once a month. Ah, all right. But still, uh, I do hope that it doesn't have to do like a true crossover kind of thing where, oh, to catch up and understand what happened here, you need to go read Transformers. Oh, God. We shall see. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324, or they can just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review in discussion podcast and exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also Master of Leg. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And I am the Dorterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. So, 
awesome ending awesome review did we do great did we do worse well I am the best of the worst because of my puns ah uh, not the puns your puns were awesome they're quite man. punishy ha <laughs> Oh, it's awesome, man! It's awesome. We listening to last week's episode uh, with the whole bear thing. That cracked me up, man! Like that was just too good. 